Hello and welcome to the TPO Ranking Show and Podcast. Good evening, Jake. Hey, Cody. How's it going? Going very well, Jake. We're uh, in COVID lockdown sort of at the moment up here in, in Queensland, up in Brisbane. But um, So a bit of football has been cancelled up this way, Jake. Yeah, we'd be talking about FFA Cup games probably live right now if uh, it wasn't for the lockdown. Mm. Yeah, I'll be playing one myself tomorrow night, but that's been postponed as well for now. Um, but there are a few games on actually at the moment, Jake. I think they must be in South Australia. I'm just looking at my app here. Just a couple of games. So anyway, we'll come we'll come to that a yep. bit later. In tonight's show, we are covering the top, I believe, five ish clubs, Jake. Top five yeah, clubs yeah, that have moved five. that have moved up in the month of uh, March. So yep. basically the start of the season. So look forward to that one. But as always, we're going to start things off with the results from around the country. We've pretty much got all the MPLs going now. We don't really cover the, uh, what's the Darwin Northern? Northern? There's, yeah, there's two in Darwin. There's the Nor, Nor Zone League and Nor the Zone. Southern League. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't really cover those ones, but um, why don't we cover those ones, Jake? Just, well, they're in the rankings, but it's not yeah. an MPL technically. Uh, okay. So we don't, yeah. And, and yeah. most of those sides are probably equivalent of tiers two, three, yeah. four in most states. Yeah, right. So basically we're just waiting on the ACT MPL, which I believe starts this weekend. Um, or maybe uh, weekend, weekend after, after yeah, yeah. After Easter and South Australia as well. Is that same weekend? Yep, correct. The 9th, cool. I think, of April, whatever that yeah that weekend is. Lovely. All right. Well, let's start with Victoria. Uh, there are a bunch of games happening right now as we speak. Some are finished, some are at half, half time. So we'll, I'll mention those after, but we'll start with the weekend's results. So Oakley beat Green Gully 2-0. Avondale and Melbourne Knights 1-0. Uh, the same result there, 1-0 St. Albans Saints v. Uh, Eastern Lions. South Melbourne with a, a 4-1 result over Altona Magic. Dandy Thunder won all with Port Melbourne Sharks. Hume City, a uh, good result. 2-0 winners over Bentley Greens. Uh, I believe Hume lost 3-0 against, was it Knights the week before, Jake? That's my memory. They lost 3-0 to someone. It was either yeah. Knights or Avondale. I think it was Knights. Uh, anyway, and Heidelberg. I believe, with, yeah, I'm not with, sure. With, Heidelberg with another win, uh, two one winners over Dandenong City. So, uh, Knights sit top of the table on on ten points. I'll just quickly mention Jake before we get into the the games next week. If you've picked any, I can hear you up there going off. That might have been the Port Melbourne <laughs> goals game, in the background. Yeah, yeah. So Port Melbourne Sharks are leading in the eighty third minute. Sort of Melbourne Saints five nil. Uh, so we've had two result, three results uh, tonight. The finish already. South Melbourne beat Dandenong Thunder one nil. Eastern Lions beat Hume City 2-0, Jake. That's a bit of a... That's a big one, upset. yeah. That might be... So that's Eastern Lions' second win of the season. Uh, Hume, who us, who were six going into the round, uh, that would have been a nice win there, but too bad. And Heidelberg beat top of the table Melbourne Knights. So Heidelberg will actually go ahead of uh, Melbourne Knights now. Looks there like they will yeah. be top of the table for... Ne- uh, no, no, South Melbourne will be top of the table. South Melbourne go top, yep. Um, and Green Gully just finished as well. One nil winners over Altona Magic. So yes, yeah, so um, and they'll be up there. Uh, they'll be equal with Melbourne Knights, but goal difference will keep Melbourne Knights in front of them. But yeah, yeah it's um, it's kind of a bit. I wouldn't. I don't know if it's unpredictable. Um, Maybe that is the right way to describe it. But there's definitely some results that are kind of going back and forth a bit. Um, teams mm. that have. I mean, South Melbourne now the only unbeaten side, although they've had three draws. But yep. yeah, quite close still. Jake, have you picked any games uh, for the weekend or, or will, you were looking no, to so back to the tonight? Yes. So the games you just rattled off then are the round six games. Um, round seven is the weekend of the ninth. So there's actually no games, no MPL games in Victoria this weekend. Over Easter, um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Melbourne Knights v Heidelberg would have been the obvious pick. Um, and as you just mentioned, Heidelberg getting up 1-0 there probably... Yep. Bit of a, a surprise result. The the Eastern Lions one, Cody, that now that we know the result is worth mentioning, the rankings gave them only about a 16% chance of winning and they've beaten Hume City 2-0. So there you go. There you go. Never listen to the rankings. Uh, let's yeah, go to... That's the lesson. Let's go to New South Wales, MPL. So there's also one game that has finished tonight. Arpia beat Sutherland Sharks 1-0. So that's Arpia's first win of the season. Congratulations, yep. Arpia. And I think they're still equal bottom of the table with, with Wollongong. Um, but yeah, from the weekend, we had Sutherland Sharks beating Mount Druitt Town Rangers 4-1 and Arpia losing 
to Manly 2-1. So it's a bit of a flip for, for tonight's results. Marconi upsetting uh, the team, the informed team of the year so far, Jake, Sydney United. Uh, Marconi winning 2-0. So Sydney United, after winning their opening four games, uh, dropped their first points and their first loss of the season. Northbridge Bulls beating Wollongong 1-0 in a big result there. Black Tower and upsetting Rockdale 4-1. And Sydney Olympic beating the Sydney FC youth team 2-1. So, Jake, a few upsets. If you start of the season, if you go, well, in this round, Jake, Rockdale are playing, Sydney United are playing, Arpia are playing, and who's the other one? Wollongong are playing. Uh, you'd probably put some money on at least one of them winning. I don't know. Looking down that list, I don't know that if I was picking results that I would have picked a single one of those. Mm. Maybe maybe, maybe Sutherland, game. Mount Druitt, um, maybe Olympic and Sydney FC yeah. youth. But, you know, even then, that's, yeah, there's a lot of surprise results there. Yeah. Have you picked any games for the weekend coming, Jake? I did. So I think um, I've got my eye on... The game on Friday night, Manly United against Sydney FC youth team. Um, so Manly okay. currently sitting in second, second. Uh, and Sydney FC youth in uh, fifth at the moment. So, yeah, they're the, I guess, two sides that look in form. Sydney FC have had a few good results, and um, you mentioned they, they lost to Sydney Olympic 2-1, but um, they're still kind of up there, and Manly's probably surprising a little bit as well and, and look quite strong, mm. um, beating a few of the top sides already. Or Manly, the only undefeated team in New South Wales NPL. Uh, they've had two wins and three draws. So, uh, and yeah, like you said, sitting in second. And as I mentioned, just at the top there, Arpy did win uh, tonight, uh, which is a Wednesday night we're recording. The show should come out on Thursday when I get around to editing and uploading. So let's move to Queensland, Jake. We had just the one game postponed, it looks like. Gold Coast United and Eastern Suburbs. I think the, we had a lot of rain sort of finished up Tuesday night, but there was a lot of rain. Um, so I guess maybe the the pitch was just not in good enough condition. There might have been some other circumstances. I'm not sure. Um, well, it wasn't good enough for the Raw to play on, on the weekend. So oh, uh, that's right. Here, so yeah, the they made, Brisbane Raw made the call pretty early, didn't they? To postpone yeah, I think it. they I think they relayed the turf or something recently. Uh, so they're obviously gotcha. having yep. some. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Morton Bay, Jake beat Magpies 2-1. Sunny Coast Wanderers made the trip down south uh, to Redlands and they uh, picked up three points, 3-1 three winners. Logan won all with Lions FC. Big result. Lions sort of, um, I don't know if you call struggling, Jake, but definitely not the the team maybe they were last year. We'll get into that not the dominant, in Yeah, not the dominant force anyway that we're used to seeing. Yeah, I suppose. Um, well, what are, what are they sitting on? One one win, two draws, and one and a loss. So, yeah, I mean, it's still early, early days. Four four games in, it's hard to sort of make any big predictions. But from what I've heard and from the results, they they don't they don't look like the same team. They've lost a bunch of players. I think some of the biggest players, the Hall brothers, went down south. I yeah, think to south. Did, yeah. yeah. Anyway, one of them. So yeah. Um, Anyways, uh, Gold Coast Knights beating Kapalaba 2-0. I'm wearing the Kapalaba jersey tonight from last season or the year before. Peninsula Power beating Olympic 1-0, which, Jake, you went to that game. I did, yeah, on uh, Sunday, not what, Sunday afternoon. Um, I thought it was, uh, I don't know, the, but neither side wanted to be too adventurous in the for like a lot of the first half, I guess. Um, a lot of um, defensive play from Peninsula. They seemed happy to sit back and let Olympic have the ball. Um, I don't know if I, I'm trying to, after the game, I was trying to think about how many um, chances Peninsula had and, mm. and I could only come up with probably two two chances the whole game and they scored one of them. Um, I, I mean, they were good for it. They played you know, their strategy well, um, but to be honest, I, I thought Olympic were probably, if I had to pick one, they were the better side and I think they'll be disappointed not to at least have had a draw um, and, and I'm pretty confident in saying both sides will be up there at the end of the season though. Mm. And how's this for a result at the start of the year? I'm not sure. Well, maybe a year ago, sorry, mate. Um, you wouldn't have picked this. Brisbane Raw, you teamed to be beating Brisbane Strikers 6 0. So, Jake, you predicted Strikers to go down. And I said last week, no, nah, I don't think they will. But after a result like that, they're sitting bottom of the yeah. table, uh, goal difference negative eight. Jake, don't look at the table. All right. Don't. I just I said, glanced at it. it. All right. <laughs> Which team has conceded the least amount of goals in Queensland? So far, the least amount of goals yep. um, after how many rounds are we in? Yeah, three or four. Yeah. Uh, okay, um, be quick about it. Yeah, I do need to be. I'm trying to rattle off the the top sides. Uh, Peninsula. Yeah, they've only conceded two goals. 
uh, the most, Jake, is Strikers and Kapalaba conceding 10 each. Um, and obviously, Strikers just conceded six in the one game. So, um, Jake, yeah. have you picked any games out this? I don't think there are games. No, no, no games in uh, Queensland yeah. MPL this this weekend. Uh, this was kind of the FFA Cup weekend, as we yeah. touched on. So, yeah, there's a, there's a few. It's not the last of the uh, MPLs that doesn't have games that we're going to talk about. Do we know if the FFA Cup games on the weekend are going ahead yet? Or they haven't made? I think it all depends. Uh, so, for those not in Brisbane or even those that are, I think. Tomorrow morning, Thursday morning, there's uh, the next announcement. I think that'll really dictate whether, you know, whether there's going to be, uh, well, extended lockdowns potentially. But my yep. guess is that there'll be no games at all because there's been uh, no training all mm. week. Yep, fair call. Okay, let's go all the way to Western Australian Premier League for round two. Uh, Perth Soccer Club beating Inglewood United 2-1. Armidale beating ECU Jindalbert. 4-0, uh, Balcata beating Bayswater City, 3-2. Uh, Gwellop 2-0 with Sorrento. Rockingham City, 1-0 winners over Coburn City. And Florida Athena, the team to beat, Jake, beating Perth Glory Youth yeah. Team, 4-0. So I think, yeah, they are ranked higher. So, um, yeah, were any of those results stand out to you? Uh, not so much. Maybe the, um, like I said, Florida Athena beating Perth Glory Youth Team, 4-0. It was only... Uh, what 2019? I think Perth Glory were up there. They they almost mm. won the premiership. They would have been the first youth league team, I believe, to to win an MPL. Um, but they were pipped at the post by uh, Perth SC at the time. Uh, and then they lost in the grand final last year. They seemed to have. I mean, whether they promoted some players or they had a new bunch of young players coming through, they weren't as strong. And um, yeah, it seems like this year they're struggling a little bit as well with with um, a loss on a draw so far. But um, yeah, nothing else that really stands out to me. Um, although I guess you'll get into some fixtures in a minute. There's a, an interesting game coming up this weekend um, between Florida Athena and Perth Soccer Club. Yeah, well, Jake, jump into it if you want. They, they look like they are the two highest ranked teams in, in the state. Yeah, so they're currently number one and two. Perth Soccer Club were the highest ranked for quite a long time. Yeah, I remember. Um, they've swapped around, I think. Um, at the moment, Florida Athena ranked 36th um, as the highest ranked and then Perth Soccer Club 50th at the moment. And they're currently first and third on the table, both unbeaten, um, although Perth did have a, a draw in round one. So, yeah, I, I think that'll be an interesting one. Um, Florida Athena looks strong, though. Do you know if... Um any of these teams have been in the top 25, like looking at um, the graph there, the head-to-head Florida v. Perth, it looks like Perth uh, maybe back in June 2019 had quite a high point there, nearly reaching 2,000. Do you reckon that would have been enough to get them into the top 25? I, You know, from memory, I don't think that they, at that point, they were very, very close because it was something that we were looking at and I was watching each week to see if they'd get that extra win they needed to to creep yeah. in. I don't think they got there, okay. um, but I, I'll go back and check. So, yeah, I, I don't remember ever seeing a, a Western Australian side in the top 25 since mm. we've been focusing on it. Yeah, well, if, say, Florida or Perth or Sorrento have a good good run in the league and then maybe one of the or two of the teams do well in the FFA Cup. Wait, how many entrants did they, they get two this year? Yeah, they, they've always gotten two. They've always had two, yeah. It's, yep. And South Australian's just been increased to two, is that right? Uh, I'll have to double check that. That was, yeah, they did change it last year, but I can't remember. I think they might have taken one of the New South Wales spots, but um, yeah, we might double check that. Yeah, I can't remember. Um, okay, let's go to Tasmania MPL. So the big match, the match, the round, uh, the two highest ranked teams down in, in Tasmania was South Hobart v Devonport City. South Hobart getting the three points there, one nil winners. Olympia Warriors beating Riverside Olympic 3-2. Kingborough Lions beating Launceston City 2-0. And Glenorchy Knights beating Clarence Zebras 3-1. So just the two rounds played there. And there's three teams who are on six points, Jake. South Hobart, Kingborough Lions, and Glenorchy Knights. Uh, the image that I have here doesn't have any fixtures on the weekend, Jake. Is that uh, they've had yeah, no. East off as well? Correct. Uh, that's right. And who would have thought, I mean, again, only two rounds in and fixtures have meant that they haven't played, uh, you know, your, your South Hobarts or your Devonport Cities, but King Borough Lions and Glenarchy Knights are both sides that have copped some very, very heavy defeats over the, the last mm. few years. So hopefully, um, yeah, <laughs> they've they've turned it around. I mean, the biggest one that stuck out to me was King Borough Lions over Launceston City. Uh, I probably would have picked it the other way, but there you go. 
And we'll finish on the Northern New South Wales NPL, which probably produced the oh, well, the, the New South Wales NPL had some upsets, but this one, going off the our intel we got from our Instagram messages last week, Jake, before the show, this is certainly some surprises here. So Edgeworth Eagles, the highest ranked team down there, going down in the opening round to Maitland, who are also a very strong team. So Maitland ranked 34th, Edgeworth 21st. Um, Lake Macquarie City drawing with Broadmeadow Magic. So Broadmeadow also, well, they're ranked 40th, but they're sort of supposed to be one of the strong teams uh, down there and have been at least in the last few years since we've been covering uh, the MPLs around the country. Uh, Newcastle Olympic beating Adamstown Rosebud 6-2. And Jake, this is a massive result. Lambden Jaffers beating Western Workers 7-1. And we got, we got told that Western are supposed to be decent this year. So... Uh, we'll see what happens there, but uh, Liam yeah, are a strong result. team. Um, and the Char- Charlestown, Missouri, the Valentine was postponed. So just the one result, uh, just yep. the one round there, sorry. Um, and Jake, any games you're looking at this weekend? Um, I did have one, Liam and Jeffers, Edgeworth Eagles. Um, good, yeah. for, for obvious reasons, Liam and Jeffers, huge win in that first game and Edgeworth still the highest ranked side in, in the state. Um, so yeah, the the rankings still have Edgeworth as favourites. Obviously, they they did fall a spot in the rankings, and and this was one of the conversations we had a couple of weeks ago about whether they would stay in there for the season. And we've seen that yeah. one loss, um, and they already fall a spot. So another couple, and and like tough opposition, Lambton Jaffers. So if they have another loss to open their season, they might find themselves outside the top twenty five already. But I find um, North New South Wales is interesting, Cody, just because obviously. Having Northern uh, Edgeworth into the top twenty-five is a is a pretty good, um, I guess, result for them. They've had a number of seasons where they've been dominant, both yeah. in the league and the FA Cup. But there's a number of clubs that are all kind of floating around the thirty to forty mark in terms of the rankings. You've got Maitland at thirty-four, uh, Broadmeadow at forty, Lambda Jeffers at forty-one, um, and then Charlestown Azuri fifty-one. That goes down from there. But there's a number of clubs where if they kind of break out ahead of the pack they could easily find themselves in in mm. or near the top 25 instead of Edgeworth. Yeah. Oh, we'll see uh, with things to come. So uh, so that's it, Jake, from the MPLs. As we mentioned, ACT and South Australian MPLs starting in a couple of weeks. So uh, the show will get slightly longer. Um, let's move into the top movers, Jake. You just take it away. Well, let me – can I do the uh, top 25? There's a couple of things to mention before I do that. Um we, we yep. mentioned last week Cent- Central Coast Mariners moved ahead of Melbourne Victory mm-hmm. for the first time in a very long time. Uh, they had a draw with Melbourne Victory and that result actually saw them fall back below Victory uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> very temporarily. temporarily. Um, and that's because as the sl- Central Coast being ranked higher than Victory, being the, the slight favourites. It's still very close. Um, so there's like yeah, one it's, point, it's, four points yeah, in it, which there's is There's almost nothing. nothing in it. Yep. Exactly. Um, and the other one was Hume City have moved back into the top 25. They were, okay. I think, the side that fell out last week. Um, so they have, they've come back tonight, in. right? Yeah, so that'll change again after we update. Yeah. But for now, they're in uh, and Bentley Greens were the side that fell out. Um, yeah. hear, my, hear my dog barking in the background there, Cody? Oh, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> so um, and then the other one, just to mention, was Lions uh, have fallen down to 18th. Um, they started the season at 14th. Um, but it's interesting because you've got Lions, Olympic, and Peninsula now at 18, 19, and 20, all very close. Mm. Um, so, yeah, that'll be interesting to see how that happens uh, going forward. But just as an overall for the top 25, um, you mentioned a few of the upsets across the different leagues. Almost, there's, there's only a couple of clubs in the top 25 that actually had good results. There was a lot of points dropped by the top NPL clubs around the country. Um, so it'll be interesting to see kind of the the chasing pack, whether we have a few changes in the coming weeks. For sure. All right. Um, the biggest movers in March. Uh, I'll give you the top five and I'll count down. So f- in fifth place is Glenroy Lions from the Victorian State League Five. They've played the three games, three wins, uh, and including an FFA Cup game that was against, I guess, you know, high-ranked opposition. Yep. And they've scored eight goals and I think goal difference of three. So that's number five. Um, and they're, they're still ranked quite low. They're in 715th. Uh, number four is Greenvale United from Victorian State League 4. Uh, played four games, three wins and a draw. One of those, again, FFA Cup. And, and they scored a boatload or nine goals across those four games. 
Third is West Wanderers from the Toowoomba League, Cody, Southwest Queensland. Okay. Yep. Um, that, they've played three games, including um, a couple of good results against um, sides that are, I think, Willowburn they beat, who are, have been the strong club up there for a while. They scored 12 goals in their three games, so a lot of goals going in. Uh, number two is Westside Strikers Caroline Springs, bit of a mouthful, uh, from Victorian State League 4. Four games in, three wins and a draw. And again, FFA Cup results seeming to be the the main mover or, mm. or driver of movement um, in March. Just a lot of these kind of State League 4 and 5 sides beating State League 3 or 2. Uh, and then the biggest mover in March was Frank, Frankston Pines from the Victorian State League 3 uh, southeast and pretty good record here, Cody. Four games played and four-one, including FFA Cup game. Fourteen goals scored and only one conceded. Good start to season. Yeah, and they're up to three hundred and eighty-second on the rankings. No, good for them. All right, um, well, let's move on quickly then. We do we, any FFA Cup to mention, Jake? I know there was a few. I, I mentioned there was a few. I think South Australian games going on tonight. A bunch of Queensland stuff got postponed um did you have anything you wanted to mention no not specifically I'm, I'm still kind of waiting to make sure we get um without the show going too long but focus on a couple of the ones that involve the mpl sizes we get a bit okay. closer but there was one result to mention yeah um there have been a few mpl clubs involved in ffa cup in the act and oh, yep. probably the big scalp already is canberra olympic losing one nil to tugranong um in extra time uh just the other day so that was probably one of those sides. If you had to pick the one team from uh, Canberra to make it, Canberra Olympic would have to be up there as one of the favourites and yeah. they're already knocked out. Yep, for sure. There you go. Okay, let's finish on the under-23s. Have you done an update tonight, Jake? I, I haven't clicked on the I link certainly yet. have, yes. Of All course right, I have. Uh, don't, don't doubt me. Okay, so for those uninitiated, we picked 10 players each under 23 years of age uh, from the A-League. We took turns picking and um, basically there's a fantasy website called Sports Deck uh, and they give a, each round scores for each player based on their performances or goals and assists and clean sheets, all that sort of fun stuff, fantasy stuff. And yeah, the, the, the team with the most points at the end of the year wins something. We're still come up with a prize, but it's been pretty close the last few rounds. How do we go this? I think you went into the round a few points up um, or well, I was a well, few points up. Yeah, I guess just to finalise uh, the previous round, because I think, Cody, when we recorded last week, there was a game about to happen or maybe it was happening yeah. the next night. So there was still some Sydney and Perth players to play. Um, when those scores were added, it actually finished with me being one point ahead of you at the okay. end of uh, round 13. Right. Uh, round 14, uh, you've, you've gone and taken the lead again uh, almost entirely – or your, your big points really came from Denny Genre uh, from MacArthur, okay. who scored uh, 22 points for the round. So he's nice. had a very good one. Um, and then the second highest for the week was Jake Brimmer, who got 10. And then there was a lot of low scoring players and, and a few, quite a few players who didn't play or get any sort of game time. So uh, you've ended up with 42 points for the round and I got 33, uh, which Jeez, is a pretty, low. yeah, fairly low round. scores again. Yeah. Um, and what that means is that you are now eight points clear in the overall tally with uh, 687 so. and I'm 679. So, yeah, still very close. Still very close. And it looks like Jake Brimmer uh, is, been, is the top scorer so far uh, after 14 rounds, 141 yeah, points. He, yep, of the sides that we've picked, he is. Um, I might do an update again next week on all the other uh, under-23s that we didn't choose because there's a few who have scored mm. quite well. Yeah, um, okay. There's probably – there's a few players here, Cody, not to spend too long on this, but there's a few players who have obviously fallen out of teams or, um, yeah, just are sitting on the bench not getting game time now, which – who were playing earlier. Um, yeah. And we've both got a couple of those. I've got the likes of uh, Callum Neuenhoff and James Delianov, sure. goalkeeper for Adelaide, was playing and now isn't. Um, but, yeah, that's the sort of thing that you expect at this stage of the season. Even guys like um, Ben Falami in your team who mm. never really – held down a spot but was getting a little bit of game time here and there. He hasn't played at all for a couple of weeks either. Yeah, okay, right. Oh, well, there's still we're just, I think, over the halfway point of the season, A-League season. So still uh, I'm sure there'll be plenty of opportunity for these young players. As yep, you mentioned, definitely. there's a lot of uh, chopping and changing of, of young teams, young players coming through squad. So, Jake, anything else for the show tonight? Otherwise, I suppose we'll wrap up there. 
No, I think that's it. Let's uh, get into Easter and then next week mm. we'll be able to start talking about South Australia and ACT as well. Good stuff. All right. Thanks, Jake. Thanks, Cody. Thanks, everyone, and we'll catch you next week. Bye.